Uh, I call them the Friday Night Jams. And um, I haven't done them the last couple Fridays because I have been um, doing a lot of interviews. I'm often on these uh, podcasts and video series, and I, I, I'm not going to be here for very long. Uh, what is it, 8.20? I'm gonna, this is only going to be like a 30-minute one at the most because I've got to go to um, – I'm doing a podcast with um, Witch Taint, you know, the most evil – band in the world kind of satirical band but it's going to be fun um so i only have 30 minutes and normally what i do with with these friday night things is i play a little bit i let you know whatever uh, i'm working on and um i'm gonna play a little bit and um i see people are coming in this is great and um yeah i, I haven't done the last two fridays because there have been live interviews that have corresponded exactly at that time. So, um, yeah, look at all these people coming in. Somebody saw me play at Daryl's house with Stu Ham, yeah, upstate New York, Mexico. Cool. Yeah, we're getting quite the variety. Um, I always take a few questions at these things. The problem is I can't see the questions and the comments while I'm playing. So if you have a question or a comment, and it is while I am in the moment playing music, uh, please hold it or re-ask the question uh, once we're done. In fact, I sometimes I miss friends of mine, uh, fellow musicians, uh, occasionally even VIP, super well-known people, because I'm, I'm playing. <laughs> I don't see them joining and saying hi. So, uh, yes, let me know. Oh, thank you for the nice comment of guitar and photography i do have some news well i have news about both of those things um so yeah i'm, I'm gonna play just a little bit so i'm i want to let you know what i'm practicing so um i'm practicing to i'm relearning uh this tune by alan holdsworth uh from this album iou i don't know if you can see that. The, the cover's really not that it's, it's kind of like the it's almost like the black album cover yeah you know? it's just a logo it's black and a logo so don't worry about the cover but um the song's called letters of mark and i'm not going to play usually i play along with the album i think this album is too busy to play along to but i'm just going to play a, a sample of it okay that's the bass solo Nice simple music. So Alan Oldsworth was a huge influence on everybody. Uh, Van Halen, Satriani, Zach Wilde, you, you name it. All right, so we're just gonna listen to a little, little moment of this. So it's almost at the end of the cycle. And then it starts over. And the second time, it's a little different. Um, people asking that didn't catch what that was. Alan Holdsworth, one of the most influential guitar players. Listen, ask any guitar player. Anybody who makes their living playing a guitar will probably have nice things to say about Alan Holdsworth. So, um... I'm playing to this um, device I got. Actually, I'll, I'll show you guys. But hopefully, I won't. I'm not going to move this thing. I'm not going to move my phone because the connection is very tentative. So, um, I don't want to keep losing the connection. Well, we have the connection. Um, I was going to show you this piece of gear, but I'll show you another time. Uh, but basically what it is, it's a, um, it's called the G4, um, no relation to Satriani's G4 by Zoom. It's a multi-effects pedal 
And uh, the coolest thing about it, I just discovered tonight, is it has this loop function where you I could loop that whole cycle. So what I just played for you from the Alan Holdsworth album, I that was half a cycle. Normally, with most loop pedals, it it starts repeating right when you get to the end of that half a cycle because it's a really long cycle. On this, I was able to record the whole thing. I just discovered that tonight. So what I tried to do was um, I switched to clean tone and um, I played e each chord and I tried to get it very simple, just playing on the one, do, do. just like that. I mean, that's much simpler than what those guys are playing, but um, it works for practice. So I, I actually looped that with clean tone, and I have that going through one amp, and then I have a whole other rig going through another amp. So I hope you can hear this. I'm not sure you'll be able to hear everything, but uh, this is the loop. So this is my loop for uh, Alan Holdsworth Letters of Mark. I'm not sure you can hear that. I'll try to crank it up. So it's coming from over there. And then my other rig over here, I'm just going to play guitar to. So we're right at the point where we left off in the cycle and then it starts over. I'm going to try coming in here. So just a short one tonight because there isn't much time. 
And um, I got, I, I'll be honest, I, I got a little lost at one point. Um, it's been a while since I played that tune. So I'm getting back up to speed on it. I um, played that song in tribute to Alan a few years ago with his band, which was like a huge honor. And that took place at the Iridium in New York City. And so I really had to get it down. And I was playing with um, some other great players, my friend Nir Felder, uh, Alex Masichek, uh Tim Miller. These are like, the last two guys are like real Holdsworth specialists. Um, so it was kind of a high pressure situation, but I really dug in and it was fun. But uh, that was a few years ago, so I need to get back into it. So that's what I'm, I'm practicing now. Um, I hope you guys could hear everything. And I'm going to be doing more of this stuff. Another thing I've been doing this week, I've been setting up a, um, a Patreon account, which is really fun. And uh, I think you, you guys are going to dig it. So I'm going to do things like this more often, and I'm going to share more of what I'm working on. And I, I see requests, you know, Alex, play this. Alex, play... Well, that will be possible. We can make We can make this happen. We're just going to do it over on the Patreon as soon as it launches. It should be launching this week and um i'm pretty excited yeah there's another request play alex play mahavishnu i i will <laughs> that can be arranged and i think it's going to be set up in such a way that um the basic uh entry you'll have access to the uh the patron only jam sessions like this um i'll take like the most requested things and i'll try to do i'll try to take those requests I'm not, yeah, I can't take every request, but I'll, I'll take what I can. And then at the higher levels, we can arrange like real requests. I'll do like, I'm going to, I'll do, I'm going to try this and see how it goes at the higher levels. I'll do like a guaranteed request where I'll make a personal video of playing. For, so I'm, I'm excited. It's all kinds of new stuff and uh, new stuff to do because there's no touring. I'm supposed to be... Uh, where am I supposed to be tonight? I'm not even sure. I think I'm supposed to be in the Southwest somewhere. I know la last week uh, I was supposed to be in Texas uh, with Testament, Black Dahlia Murder, and Municipal Waste. And we are supposed to be in our second week of the tour. It's not happening. We don't know when live music is going to happen again. Um, it's what... What can you do? So um, I'm working on that, the Patreon, which is a lot of fun. Um, I've been doing these um, videos. I got this new quarantine project with a drummer named Charlie Benante, which has been going great, playing songs by a band called Rush. And that has been fun. That's been the silver lining is that that came up and people seem to like it. Um, so I'm, I'm actually I'm going to incorporate that into the Patreon as well because I've been sort of recording clips of myself listening to Rush and sort of dialing in the the Rush stuff. So uh, those clips will be available on on the Patreon. And then um, I'm, I'm definitely not bored. I've, I've been hired for some studio stuff by some independent artists and. Uh, Every day, it's it's pretty busy. It's just without the travel. So, um, anyway, what uh, what do you guys want to know? I see some nice comments coming in. Uh, thank you, thank you. Nice comments, nice comments. Thank you. Am I a fan of Tommy Emmanuel? Yes, very much. He's unbelievable. Um... He is one of those players that I don't know how he he does what he I won't try to do what he does because it's it's so unbelievable. Um, yeah, Patreon is a good idea. I think so. Do a cover album with Charlie and well, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, Tribal Tech play. I, I'm like I said earlier. I may we're gonna work out a system for requests over on the Patreon, but, um, play, are you a fan of Pat Metheny? I'm a huge fan of Pat Metheny. In fact, I, um, I think one of the first clips that, I, one of my first practice clips that I posted on Instagram was, um, a Pat Metheny solo that I played a long time, I transcribed it a long time ago, but I still, 
um, try to stay brushed up on it. Uh, from a song called Nothing's Personal by Michael Brecker. And uh, I see a comment on my photographic style. Oh, okay, I don't know those names. Uh, Robert Frank. Robert Frank, actually, yes, I know his name. Uh, Elliot Irwin, I don't know his name. Um, well, thank you for noticing. And it's funny you mentioned that because um, I placed this order, interestingly enough. I was not expecting this till uh, next week. Um, I, so I'm actually really impressed that this arrived so soon. But I, I want to share this uh, with you guys. This is the first time, at least in this phase of life and photography, that I've done this. Um, Ta-da! You see that? A print. Yeah, I, you know, you forget when you um, take photographs digitally and... Yeah, when most of your photographs are either on the phone or on the digital camera, you forget how cool print is. So, so far, I've only printed a couple dozen, and I'm kind of in the phase where I'm seeing what, yeah, what works better than others. Um, yeah, maybe there's some that I, I, I'm going to darken or others I'm going to lighten next time I print them. Uh, what kind of paper, you know, there's different types of paper. Anyway, these these I'm showing you now, these are ones I think that came out pretty well. What do you think? So these are also going to be um, part of the Patreon, too. There's going to be a level where um, I sign these, I number them. These are printed on the finest paper by printers in in Brooklyn, where this was taken, obviously. The other one was taken in Belgium. And uh, this it's just been so fun to um, take, you know, this it's just this whole new uh, phase of creativity that I think it relates to the music a lot, but but it's different. Um, so I will, uh, I'll, I'll be on next week and I will tell you more about that. Um... Uh, je sais pas en anglais, désolé. Uh, <laughs> um, je parle un peu le français, mais uh, un peu. Uh, <laughs> I, I need to brush up on, on that as well. Um, somebody is asking, I have about 10 minutes, by the way, before I have to go jump off and do this podcast. 12 minutes, so uh, I will take questions. Chords for Holdsworth, how did you learn them? That is a very good question, um, and it's the answer is is kind of interesting. Um, what happened was I told you I played this gig with uh, the Holdsworth band, and um, luckily we had a couple months um, advance time to do this, but it was very um, it was a challenge because um, yeah, you know, there's there are. Um, music books with his music, but not, <clears throat> they're, they're pretty complex, and I do like to learn by ear, but, he, um, interestingly, the guys who played in his band had these little handwritten charts, and they were so basic, <laughs> you yeah, because he, he wasn't really meticulous with his, uh, he was very meticulous with his recording and with his writing, but I think it was just very natural to him, uh, just to play like that, and, a lot of the guys who who played with him would sort of uh, translate <laughs> the charts he gave. He would give these very rough charts, and then somebody would write them out. Um, so I, I did have some, I, and I have them somewhere. I have these like insider um, notes from the Holdsworth band uh, for people that had to learn the chords, and it's really cool. Um, I'll just play you a couple from that. From that tune, this is my favorite chord from that Holdsworth song. Isn't that cool? I don't even know what you call that. I guess that would be a... Uh, it's got a flat five and a natural five and a minor third. Then it moves up with a sixth, um, a ninth, And a, uh, a, wow, a flat, it's crazy. <laughs> so 
he 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 was such a master with chords. Uh, so yeah, it was a combination of by ear and uh, using these notes that I was really privileged to have a peek at through the band. Um, what is the hardest piece of music you've ever played? Well, that I would say, God, the whole the whole tour stuff that that's up there. Um, that song was was hard, but <clears throat> I thought you know even harder was um, I'll just play a, a little bit of a. This probably doesn't sound hard, but look look at, look at these chords. Ah. I forget it, but <laughs> that was another one. That that's uh, called metal fatigue, and the he does these insane chords where he just. Kind of moves them all over the neck. So th that was hard. And I would also say that um, once I played uh, Roundabout, and it's not the hardest tune in the world, but I had to do that intro. And this was with um, the Trans-Siberian Orchestra uh, with special guest John Anderson of Yes. And in front of 14,000 people in Philadelphia. And the um, creator of the show, producer Paul O'Neill, may he rest in peace. He comes up to me, you know, minutes before going on. He you know, says, "Alex, we're here with John Anderson. He's used to Steve Howe playing that song. Uh, there's fourteen thousand people out there. It's sold out. Uh, this is Yes's biggest market since the '70s. Don't screw it up." <laughs> and then I have to go out there, and and it's so intimate, right? It's it's okay. It's not that hard, but it's you know. It is so easy to screw that up. You have no idea. And also, um, other people are cueing off of you, right? So this part. That triggers a keyboard. Wow. So somewhere there's video of that. So I got through it, but I, I was in such a zone. I don't have any memory of, of playing it because I had to go into this place where I really had to pretend I was alone playing the song by myself, not looking at anything because... The, that's the hardest thing to do is something that's simple, but you can screw it up so easy. Sometimes the simplest stuff is the easiest to screw up because it's so obvious. Hey, Anna from Spain, España. Hello. Good to, good to hear from you. All right. Now I'm starting to see some folks I know here. How cool. Uh, maybe you can upload all your photos and page. Yes. Um, I'm planning... I'm, I actually have a bunch of photos that they're not on my Instagram page yet, a ton of them, and I'm trying to figure out a way to turn them into a private album. I don't think it's that hard. I just need to um, get off my butt and do it. But um, yeah, that's going to be part of the Patreon thing. So there will be a few photos, as always, on uh, Skolnick Picks on Instagram, and um the rest will be in this <clears throat> private photo album that you will have access to uh, through the Patreon. Uh, somebody likes the Testament album. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody's asking me. Um, somebody's asking me about where the cat is. Usually around now, she she's like glued to me all the time. But she she wants her space usually... For a few hours. <laughs> She'll probably be back in like one hour. But she, she she's around. Uh, do you have any favorite Australian guitar players? Well, you know, the obvious one is... <clears throat> the obvious two, I guess, would be Angus and Malcolm. Um, and I just think, you know, Angus... He's he's almost... He's so good, but he's he's almost overshadowed by his own persona. 
and his performance um, persona. Because it's so larger than life. So, but, you know, I, he's a really, really deep musician. Um, and, the, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a bunch. There's, there's, a, there's definitely a whole bunch. But, you know, he's the first one that comes to mind. Uh, it, <clears throat> was Alan Holdsworth the best ever? Well, Alan Holdsworth was the only one that could play like Alan Holdsworth. Really play like, like nobody else can really play like that. And I think there there are a few players where you can sort of interpret them, you can learn from them, but nobody can really do what they do. And uh, he he was like that. And in fact, even if you watch live video of Alan Holdsworth, he, he played differently every time. Um, the same stuff. Even a song like Metal Fatigue, which has this beautiful intro to the, when he starts the solo. Like, how do you not play? But you know what? He was such an improviser, and uh, he was uncompromising. I, you know, he <laughs> probably would have gone... He would have... I mean, obviously, he, he went very far as a guitar player, but I think he would have been you know, beyond. I think he would have been in, like, Jeff Beck, Satriani territory as far as like a bigger audience if you know he, maybe he had one song one song that was a little less you know what he, you know a little more tailored to a bigger audience but he wouldn't do that and that's fine but um so I think he was the he was the best Alan Holdsworth there was there, there really is no best ever I think um you know I'm st- I'm still a huge fan of, I just think in rock music in rock and roll like the fact that van halen played what he did when he did is still mind-blowing there's just nothing like those first couple uh uh shalom israel yeah thanks for coming on i guess yeah it's shabbat i know some some folks won't be using electronics on on shabbat but uh good to hear from you and uh, I saw Brazil is on here. This is so cool. Uh, I love doing this. I want to do. I'm going to do this more. I'm going to do it more often on the Patreon, but I'll still do it here. Um. And yeah, it's a strange time. It's like what's going on? There's no touring. There's no live music. I think we're all. Uh, yeah, we're all accepting that. Uh, I'm just trying to stay busy. I'm trying to stay creative. Have having. And I'm I'm having fun, but yeah, I, I would like to, you know, do I would like to do some more live performances. I, I'm sure it will happen at, at some point. Um, and I'm just going to take a few more questions because it's almost eight fifty. Um, this other thing I'm doing at nine, it's it should be hilarious. Uh, I don't know if you guys know who Witch Taint is. This uh, fictitious black metal band. Uh, they're kind of like, like what Tenacious D is with Jack Black. This is like that with Dave Hill, the comedian, and they're in. The guys are in character. They're hilarious. Um, in my story, I just posted the uh, information on how to watch that. That's over on on YouTube. And uh, anybody else. Who's better to jam with, Bo, Bo Staff or Lombardo? I'm not going to answer that. Uh, okay. Thank you. I guess I... I, I thank you for saying I, I look good. <laughs> I'm, try, I'm, I'm holding it together. I exercise. Um, I, try, I try to I stay healthy. I know some people are falling apart during this whole thing. I don't blame them. Uh, it's not easy. Luckily, I, I actually, I like, um, I like solitude. I like, uh, I'm a workaholic, so I'm, it's a good excuse to just be productive and be busy. But I understand for people that are more uh, extroverted, that like to be out and around other people, um, yeah, this has got to be really hard, I'm sure. Argentina, hello. Uh, another book, yes. That's another thing I'm working on. Um, this is not a, uh, a juicy book at all it's for guitar players yes um it's a method book and it's with a major publisher and it's it's um i i thought actually thought it would be done by now but there was so much touring um 
between the time I, I started working on it about a year ago, and it's just been uh, non-stop. Um, so thank you. Uh, all these nice comments. Uh, it's 8.51. I probably should jump off and do the um, the Witch Taint show. Man, there's so much stuff. Ah, oh, my God. And look at all these questions I m missed. Oh, God. I feel terrible. I'm scrolling down. And I've, oh my, I have missed so much stuff. I'm so flattered. I'm like honored that you guys are out there and supporting and um, we'll do this again. So we'll try to do the Friday Night Jams again uh, soon. And then um, I'll be announcing the Patreon very soon. It's almost ready. And I'm super excited. And there, there, there will be more stuff like this so we can meet more often. And, uh... That's, yeah, that's about it. I don't have time to take any more questions. I'm sorry. Um, if some of you want to go to Witch Taint's show and catch me over there, the information is in my story. And uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Hang in there. Stay safe. Wash your hands. And I'll see you real soon. Take care.